Afternoon. I'm gonna need to ask you to turn off the music. No. Don't just turn the volume down all the way off, please. Your face is a little too close. Um, officer, I don't think I was going any faster than I should have been. Do you mind if I ask why you pulled me over? Be quiet. I'll be the one asking the questions here. You were swerving while driving, so I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Put your hands on the steering wheel where I can see them and show me your license and registration. Swerving? Wait there. Hey, was I doing something wrong? Was I swerving without noticing? I know I wasn't speeding and I thought this road was too straight for me to swerve on. It's because you were jamming out Dua Lupa so hard. What? Really? No way. Jeez. Hey, maybe. <laughs> How old is the boy in the passenger seat? Mm, officer, what does my passenger have to do with my driving? Well, I'll still give you an answer. He's 15. Is this your pickup truck? Well, of course it is. I'm 18. This is my dad's car. Look up my last name and you'll see it on the registry. I thought I told you not to lift your arm in my direction like that. But your face is too close. I'm worried about COVID. So you have a problem with the color of my skin, huh? Is that why you don't want to be close to me? Huh? I didn't say anything like that. Out of the car. I'm gonna pat you down. What? Are you kidding me? Why? What did I do? Put your hands behind your head and stand facing the car. Ugh, seriously? Are you carrying any weapons or drugs with you in the car? Obviously not. We were just going to swim. How do you think I'd be hiding anything dressed like this? When there's a probable cause to search a moving vehicle, police officers can investigate it without even needing a warrant. Hey kid, get back in the car right now! Nobody asked you to come outside! Take your hands off my bro's body. You hear me? Do it right now. Because if you don't, I'll kill you. Kid, get back to the car! Don't move! Hold it right there! This you piece of shit! That! Don't kill you! Stop! We've done enough! What are you thinking? You could die! Get off of her already! Calm down! Yeah. I'm telling you, you're going too far! Damn it! Look at what you've done! Definitely went too far! You beat them half to death! Jodio! What the hell are you doing? You're taking care of the dad on their computers, bro. The only recordings they got were their dash cams, their body cams too. I think we'll be fine if we burn them up. That's the only evidence they have. These guys are pigs. They may be pissed, but they're not going to come after us. Yeah, I guess so. Sounds about right. That's probably all they had. And we're good at covering our tracks. But there were probably lots of security cameras along the road, and there might be some on the way back too. I'll change our license plate number just to be safe. Next time, get here as scheduled. Bad. Yeah, I did good. 
We'll be kinding on you for next time too. Hey, by the way, seems somebody burned a cop car in Coastal Road on the other side of the warehouse district. You do know anything about that? Uh huh. So, how are we gonna get back? Our mom, Barbara Ann, wakes up at 7.15 in the morning. First she runs the washing machine, then she gets dressed in the bathroom. For breakfast, she serves toast, fruit, and ham. She boils the eggs for seven minutes, unless she decides to fry them, and she makes roasted broccoli. She gives her family a good morning kiss, and then another one. She dries the laundry before going to the bus stop, so she can catch the 806 bus to the airport, where she works a duty-free store. When she gets there, a boy living near us always shows up out of nowhere and offers to carry her things. When it's raining, somebody else always comes and walks her to the bus stop under their umbrella. All along the way, they have funny little chats because all of our neighbors respect her mother and they all really care for her. She can go to the airport every day without a hitch. It's because the two of us are protecting her. In other words, me and my bro work from the shadows to make sure she's all set in life. My bro's name is Dragonard Joestar. He's 18. He wakes up every morning and goes jogging on the beach without fail. All he eats at breakfast is watermelon. Be sure not to push yourself too hard, but don't give up. That's a pet saying of his. Says he heard it from his Indian yoga instructor. He loves girly fashion, and he works at a boutique in Kalahi called Eco Eco. His chest is a bit big because he gets cosmetic injections, although I've never seen him get them. He moved here to Honolulu, Hawaii from Atlantic City on the mainland. It seems like things were messy between our dad and mom because she's been raising us alone. Our surname, Joestar, comes from our mom. My name is Jodio Joestar. I'm 15. Today I'm taking the bus to the school, as usual. I'm not really going here to study, though. Yo, Jodio. Morning. How are you? You got that stuff with you? And I'm not going to build up a cast of best buds either. Hey, come on. I'm begging you, Jodio. Hey, you got the stuff, don't you? Hey! Don't fuck with me! Ah! Whoa! What's your deal, man? Whoa! Come here. Hey, over here. Come on. Sorry about how I acted on the bus. Heading off so soon? You threw in the towel pretty quick. I was hoping you'd be a little more fired up. You know, I just remembered something. I get the feeling you lended me that money. I'm just gonna return it to you as a formality. Don't go flashing cash on the bus ever again. The statue of President McKinley, the pride of our all honor, is always watching. Turn around and walk straight forward. Go! Go! Go on! Straight ahead! It's in the rainbow. In the back, look there. What am I coming to the school to do? Good morning, Principal. I guess I'm going to school for my mechanism. There's strength in a mechanism, but you can't see it. When I turned 11 years old, my neighbor invited me to Peter Gotham out of nowhere. All I did was carry things and give them to others. That was my only role. But they showed me with praise and gave me pocket money for it. All I did was carry out simple tasks, keep my mouth shut, and not think about it too hard. But in time, they started to trust and recognize my efforts. That's the mechanism. There's strength in the mechanism of trust. Even if the strength of the law won't protect me in this town, trust always can. Take that guy over there, for example. What makes me different from him? He's bigger than me, and he looks like a good student. He probably gets a big allowance from his parents, too. But look at how he's being treated. Meanwhile, I'm like this. And this. This is a story about how I got filthy rich. What? You think filthy rich is an exaggeration? You think I sound like one stuck-up son of a bitch, right? By filthy rich, I do mean making fat stacks of money. But there's something way more important than that. The mechanism. It's a universal consent. So even if I got enemies, I've already won against them. My mechanism can't be taken away. It can't fall apart. It's a principle of this world that makes wealth flow straight to me. I'd rather call it a mechanism than a system. It's like an ecosystem. There's an apex to it. I can't see it yet, but the mechanism is going to show its form and shape to us. This is a story about how a boy got filthy rich in the subtropical islands. Not humble enough for you? Too bad, because I'm definitely going to get my hands on it.
His name is Paco Lovantes, age 19. He was chubby up until about two years ago. But look at him now. This guy's ripped. He was the one riding a scooter through the courtyard earlier, but I wouldn't call us friends. Paco Lovantes is still a high schooler at 19. I don't know what he was doing for a year, but he doesn't seem like the type to study abroad. His ears like that because of his abusive dad bit a hole out of it. Hey, did you see how he moved just now? Were you able to? Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but he just swiped someone's wallet here in the store. That's a standability. He's not really trying to hide it. So yeah, Paco's a bona fide kleptomaniac. A thieving son of a bitch. He treats it like a game. The guy loves it more than video games and span onigiri. His muscles are supernatural. He can grab things with the back of his hands and his elbows without so much as lifting a finger. He probably has some friend who can make his muscles tense enough to trap even a hungry mosquito by the proboscis. Look, it's muscles. It's bunched up in a certain way to hold on to things. It's probably going to do this sort of thing plenty more times. So I'll explain it to you again once that happens. Ow, ow, ouch, ow. I, I put it back. Stop pulling it. Stop it. I put it back. But I do not. There's a gym on the other side of the street. Telling someone there's a gym is basically just asking if you can kick their ass legally. 